Very quickly after starting work on an OpenTunes project, your egg sheet and schematic view become very cluttered. How about using the sub egg sheets to simplify these views and make your projects more manageable? Well, that's what we'll be looking at today. Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're looking at sub egg sheets. When I first started with OpenTunes, I used to add column after column of animation and background. And very soon my egg sheet and schematic got really full. I knew of sub egg sheets, but didn't know how to work them, and some of the tutorials on YouTube didn't explain it very clearly. So eventually I just dived in and had a go. And now I've got my head around them a little bit, I want to have a go at explaining them to you. Okay, so I've put this small animation together. It just consists of a background with a small bit of animation and a single character which is broken down into separate columns for the feet, the head, the antenna, the eyes and the mouth. There's also a mesh over the antenna to allow me to move them. And you can see how this looks in the schematic where the top items are the background, the bottom items are the character and there's a couple of cameras on the left. And I've made a separate tutorial about these cameras which you can see in the card above. Okay, if we take a look at the FX schematic, and this looks a bit more complicated, as I've added a few effects onto the background, with some glow and blur effects, and a body highlight effect on the feet, body and ears, which gives this dark outline to them. So it's not an overly complex character or background, but you end up with quite a few nodes in the schematic. Now if you imagine you've got five or six characters, a more complicated background, and other objects to interact with, this schematic and the X sheet is going to get quite full. So what we can do is to collapse a number of columns into a sub-X sheet and that appears as one column in the main X sheet. Let's take a look at that. So first we'll collapse the character column. So all we need to do is select each of the columns for the character, holding down shift as you add them to the selection. And then you've got a choice of how you collapse them. You can go to the X sheet menu item and choose collapse. You can right click on one of the columns and choose collapse or there's a button on the toolbar if you've got the toolbar visible. So I'll choose that. It asks you if you want to include any relevant peg bars. We're not using peg bars, but, but if you are using peg bars connected to any parts of the character, you probably want to collapse them too. So we'll apply that. And instantly, all of the columns are reduced to a single column. You can see the whole character together in the preview at the top of the column, and it shows as a different color because it's a sub egg sheet. So we can rename that. And you'll also notice in the schematic, there's a single node for that one column, which has simplified the schematic view in both the FX and the stage schematic. So let's take a look inside the sub sheet. To do that, you simply click anywhere in the sub sheet. And again, you've got the three options of how to step into the sub sheet using the menu item, open sub sheet, using the toolbar button, just there. open sub egg sheet. So we'll click that one. And here you can see each of the columns that were on the original egg sheet, but isolated from the rest of the animation. So it's a simpler view to work with the animation. So if we play this animation, you see only the animation contained in this sub egg sheet and none of the other animations. And any edits you make in here will appear in the main animation. Now because we'd already set up this animation on the main egg sheet before we collapsed it into a sub egg sheet, each frame is mapped one to one. So frame number one in the sub egg sheet is frame number one in the main animation. Same for frame number two, three, four, five. As we go down the animation, we know that frame 100 here is frame 100 in the main animation. But we can change that if necessary, and I'll show you that in a second. So the final thing to mention about editing the animations in the sub egg sheet is that you haven't got to edit the animation in isolation from the rest of the project. So here we can't see the background or other characters that'll be in the scene. So it could be difficult to animate them interacting with each other. And what we can do is to use a feature called Edit in Place. Now you access this again from the menu, toggle Edit in Place, or from the button on the toolbar. And when you click that, you get to see the rest of the animations outside of this sub egg sheet. So as you work through the animations, you can see the rest of the project that you're animating against. Okay, so let's step out of this sub egg sheet. And you can do that again with a menu item, close sub egg sheet, a context menu or the button on the toolbar just here. So I'll click that and then we're back onto the main sheet. So that's handy for moving a complex animation into a single column. So the next way of using a sub egg sheet is just to simplify the main view. 
So for instance, the background for these three columns doesn't change. So we're going to collapse these into a single X sheet, again by holding shift as we select the columns, hitting the collapse button, and all three columns reduce down to a single column. So if we step inside there, and you'll notice that all the frames are the same, so we don't need to have them repeated inside this sub X sheet. So we'll delete all but frame one, and then we'll step out, and you'll notice that only frame one is shown in white, the rest of the frames that were there are now shown in red because they're not available. So what we need to do is extend frame one through to the end of this animation. So again, I'll delete the frames that aren't used, and we'll extend this to the end of the animation, which is frame 107. So in the context menu, I'll choose repeat, and I'll repeat this up to frame 107. And then the background stays there for the rest of the animation. Finally, the third sub -X sheet I'll create is to collapse a small animation into a sub -X sheet, which is the smoke and the sparks coming from the background. And we do this to not only simplify the view, but also by having both the two columns shown as only a single column, you can move the animation up and down without having to edit more than one column. Imagine, for instance, if this animation contained six different columns, all with keyframes. You'd have to move all six columns and all six sets of keys just to move one animation. Let's put those back, and then we'll collapse these down into a single X sheet. There we go. So again, we'll name the columns. So the first one was the static background. And the second one is the animated background. So now if we look at the stage schematic, we can see just three nodes for the three sub X sheets. So we've got the static background, the animated background, and the alien. And if we look at the FX, we've got exactly the same. Static background, the animated, and the alien. So although the previous 10 columns or so are now collapsed into three columns, the animation still plays as it did before. But what we can do with the new animated background is instead of having the animation happening on frame one, we can actually move it as a block to start later. So nothing happens and the animation there starts on frame 13. So that's a much simpler way to move what could be potentially a very complex piece of animation. One thing we can also do is to repeat this animation. And again, it's a single column, so it's much easier to repeat than if we had multiple columns, each with separate keys. So all we need to do is to highlight the whole block of frames, choose to copy with Control C, or of course you can right click and choose copy, and then find a new location and paste. So now if we play the animation, we should see that effect twice. There's the first one, and the second. So that's an easy way to set up repeat animations. But as the sub X sheets are just shown as frames on the main X sheet, you can still apply the same tools to them that you would for a normal drawing. So for instance, the effect of the smoke coming out of the crater on the left, we could easily move it to the crater on the right. So all I need to do is to add a keyframe for the position, make sure I run the animate tool, and that'll keep the first animation in place. And as we go to the second one, we can then move that animation to the right hand side, which will add the partial key, you can tell by the dashed blue lines on the key. And you can see that adds a key there. And the animation will then play on the right. So if I start from the beginning, we'll take a look at that. Smoke on the left, smoke on the right. So it's not only easy to repeat animations, but also to apply animated effects to them. So where I just positioned this animation, you could easily add a movement or a scale or a rotation to the animation. And finally, you can add effects to the whole animation in a sub-X sheet. So you'd add them in exactly the same way that you would to a set of drawings. So we'll start off by having the alien blurred out and then coming into focus just before the movement starts. So if we begin by adding the blur effect, And then in reverse, we'll make the background in focus and we'll blur that out as the alien comes into focus. So we'll add the blur effect. So let's take a look at that with all of the effects. So the alien starts off being blurred with the background clear. 
if I play it. The background changes over to be blurred and the alien becomes clear and does the animation. Okay, so that shows three ways to use sub X sheets. One is to move a full animation into the sub X sheet that runs at the same frame numbers as the main X sheet. The second is to make static elements compact and then repeat the frames on the main X sheet. Finally, we've got a small animation that we can place in any position on the X sheet that can be duplicated and edited and moved with any of the three X sheets having an effect placed on the whole X sheet. So that's how using sub X sheets can simplify the main X sheet and schematic views and provide extra features. And that's an introduction to using sub X sheets. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to help the channel. And comment below if you have any questions or requests for other tutorials. And I'll be back next Friday with another tutorial. And that's a guarantee. Thank you.